Hello, everyone, and welcome to Get Your Game On, Finding Connections Through Gaming. My name is Rob. Uh, my wife has cystic fibrosis. That is that is my connection, and I'll actually give a little bit more about my bio as we move forward here. Uh, I'll be moderating the session today, and we'll be introducing our other speakers in just a moment. Before I do, I want to provide a few housekeeping items. <clears throat> Excuse me. This session is being recorded and will be available to all registrants after the event on the CF Foundation YouTube channel. You'll be notified by email when the session recordings are available. Under the stage tab on the right side of your screen, you'll notice the chat for everyone who is in this session. If you are in the event tab chat, that is for the full event and not specific to this session. We will be taking audience questions during the session. We encourage you to submit your questions at any time into the Q&A box. You can find the Q&A by making sure you're in the stage tab on the right side of your screen and then select Q&A. We'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, you can also like questions submitted in the Q&A by others, which helps to prioritize based on popularity. The panel discussion is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment recommendations. Uh, do not make any changes to your own treatment plan without first, co first consulting with your care team. We'll be talking about different games uh, and game users. Uh, excuse me. We're talking about different games and the game's users and are in no way promoting any of the games or any individuals we talked about today. Just talking based on personal experience. If you have any technology problems during the session, please visit the help desk located in the expo booth area. Now, the topic we're, we're here to talk uh, to review. Individuals of CF often spend hours a day doing solitary treatments. Many have found solace in the game community of gaming online with friends, both with and without CF. Join our panel as they discuss the benefits of finding online activities to do with friends, why virtual gaming has many benefits, and how family and friends can join in on the virtual fun. Don't forget to share your gamer tags and your platforms in the chat to help grow that online community. We would love for the participants to share game recommendations, what platforms you use, age recommendations for games as well uh, would be great because we have a variety of those on here. Uh, your gamer tags, anything during the session. If you're comfortable, feel free to share that information in the chat. <clears throat> okay, now on to the good stuff. Uh, again, my name is Rob Ronenberg. Uh, my wife has cystic fibrosis. We've been together dating almost 10 years now. Uh, I didn't know what CF was in the beginning. Had to look it up. It was scary, so I stopped looking it up. I was already in love with her at that point. It didn't matter. Uh, three days ago, we celebrated her five-year anniversary of her double lung transplant. Uh, to us, that's a, a huge deal, obviously, but uh, some of you guys might know who <laughs> she is. There was a video a while back went went viral of a woman uh, taking her first breast after transplant with the when the breathing tube was removed, uh, and that is my wife Jennifer. We also got married on reality TV, where CF was the the main theme of the wedding. Why why I'm talking and you're listening to me is uh, when things were getting you know bad for her health before transplant. We we did a lot of gaming, like just little video games, Wii game stuff with our with our kids, her her daughter and son and my daughter. And then her son and I would play games a lot too. You know, something to help help, you know, not think so much about mom being sick or, or other challenges. So that's that's one of our connections. So uh, up next I'll have Maureen go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Yes. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Maureen Sharkey. I am a certified child life specialist at the Pediatric Cystic Fibrosis Center um, at Albany Medical Center in Albany, New York. Uh, and I've been there for about the last five years. Um, as a child life specialist, I help children and families cope uh, with some of the stresses and challenges that often come along with chronic illness. Uh, and one large aspect of my job is just trying to normalize the medical environment. And at my center, so one example that we do this that kind of pertains to this conversation um, is that we created um, the nurse coordinator and I um, a virtual program um, for our patients and the children to come together to play games. Um, we've done bingo, we've made recipes, snacks and dinners together. Um, we've done crafts, we've done like paint nights. Um, so different ways to help kind of build a community at our center and let the kids be kids first and foremost. Um, and I also work with families um, in troubleshooting some of the more challenging aspects of you know life with CF, CF care and treatments. Um, and a big way we do that is also through utilizing games. So, you know, it's the biggest thing right now is games and tablets and distractions and things like that. I um, mean, using that as a way for um, distraction, escape and, and coping. 
Excellent. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, and next up, we have Kelsey Smith. If you can go ahead and kind of share us your story and, and, and how what you have to say here is relevant to this what we're talking about. Hey, guys. My name is Kelsey Smith. I just turned 39, and I stream on twitch.tv, and I use the platform to help promote cystic fibrosis and put a face to the illness to help people recognize it. So that is mine. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. We're just going to jump right in. Uh, first question I have is for Kelsey. What have you seen as the biggest benefit to getting involved in gaming or, or those types of wellness activities for those with cystic fibrosis? I, there's multiple aspects. Playing by yourself, it can give you that feeling of empowerment. You know, if you're playing those single player games and leveling up and accomplishing things. But at the same time, there's the multiplayer aspect where you, you know, can meet the other people like you and be able to relate on that aspect. Or even just having fun and, you know, little bit of escape playing with other random people online and make friends. So. Yeah. I like that idea that, you know, escape, you know, I, I play games myself too. I didn't say that before, but I do enjoy playing games myself. And, and that is, that is something that's nice and, you know, forget some of those things each day as we need to. All right. Next question. Uh, it's for both of you, but we'll start with hearing from Maureen first. How do you find a way to moderate emotions or develop uh, boundaries outside of the immersion of the games, uh, you know, like red flags for parents and caregivers to watch out for. Uh, what can they do if they notice these signs? Yeah, um, I can focus a little bit more on the red flags um, for parents and caregivers. Um, I think, I mean, there's many benefits to gaming, as Kelsey kind of already, Kelsey and Rob both have alluded to. Um, but there are some warning signs I think we can be on, look up, on the lookout for um, that can kind of, you know, indicate a path towards addiction. So for these um, kiddos, for parents and caregivers, we can be, you know, um, aware of excessive use or lying about spending too much kind of time on games and how much they're actually spending on gaming. Um, withdrawal from other activities would be another warning sign, um, showing signs of increased anxiety, mood swings that's starting to kind of impact your relationship with friends and families, um, disruption in sleep patterns, um, disinterest in meals, starting to have a negative impact, uh, impact on school. Um, and being distracted and fidgety and agitated when we're not able to play, you know, just this obsession needing to be there all the time. Um, but I think that there's lots of things we can do when we start to notice some of these signs. Um, and one is we can check in with our pediatrician, see what resources and support there are and kind of what we can do to get back on track here. Um, having an open conversation, I think, is always a great idea with your kids um, about gaming addiction and warning signs with your children. Um, these are, you know, what we... and agreeing upon some rules. So, you know, this is, we're going to stick to these rules. We have a schedule with allocated screen time. You know, after school, after homework, so we can do screen time and gaming. So it's great. You can go meet your friends, uh, but also enforcing gaming in moderation and nurturing other passions and encouraging other interests and activities to balance with some of that as well. I've noticed there is <clears throat> those mm -hmm. opportunities of extreme hyper-focusing with the games and especially, you know, with someone who's depressed or the CF is a lot more severe and how much it affects them that they can really sink into the gaming and that can be dangerous just focusing on that, and, you know, not even checking in with themselves, you know, being mm -hmm. self-aware with what's going on. So. Right. It's an easy escape, like you said before to me, which is a good thing, yeah. but could also be too much. So. Right. <clears throat> All right, good. Thanks for that. Yeah, it's it, it, it's kind of that double-edged sword. It does offer that great opportunity for um, the immersion in the games, for getting with things. Uh, you know, and that's one of the things that we talked about too when we were, we were planning for this is the the idea of, you know, a, a CF kind of gaming community or looking at things where it doesn't matter if you're, you know, have to be at home doing your treatments or anything else. It's just being able to do that stuff. So, okay. Thank you. All right, Kelsey, you're up next. All right, so <clears throat> Maureen, what advice do you have for parents or caregivers to get their loved ones involved in activities like this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think um, 
one thing we think we can start with is just reaching out to your local center um, to see if they have any, you know, virtual program that already exists or if it's possible to get involved in something like this. Um, you know, perhaps starting a sign up sheet or if you have a parent and family advisory council, see if it's something that you can help with. Um, at my center, uh, we have um, a listserv of all of our parents and caregivers and their emails. And I just send out a blanket email every month to see who's interested in joining our activities. Um, and those who can, we'll send out materials to them. Um, so we do have a donor that helps with our events. So once a month, uh, we set up a craft or a cooking activity or a game. Um, and then we all jump online at the same time and just kind of hang out together for an hour or two. Um, but I don't, so she, um, the donor helps sponsor things so I can get materials and send them out to all of our patients on my own um, to kind of limit some of the, um, you know, ability for some people to be able to join. But I don't think that that's necessary um, in order to find ways to connect with others. Um, you know, you can all jump on a call and read a book together during treatment time or something for toddlers with their vests. Um, or we could, um, bingo is a pretty easy game that you could send out to everyone pretty cost effectively, you know, <laughs> who doesn't love bingo? <laughs> um, but I think there's ways to still kind of accomplish that same goal of creating a community and all getting together and doing something um, without having it to be so um, cost heavy. Um, I think it's been such a fun thing at our center to find a way to all get together and build that community. Um, and I don't think it has to be CF specific. Um, like we work, I work in a subspecialty clinic with lots of different diagnoses. Um, so there's different ways maybe you can just find connections with other people who just also, you know, have a lot of treatment burden or what, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, but it has been fun for our patients to see other kids that do have cystic fibrosis because it's, it can be a very isolating um, condition. Um, you know, one time we made a snack and it was so cute because all the kids were like all excited to see each other taking enzymes and how crazy that was to find someone else who, you know, was like them. Um, so it's been, it's been really cool. So I suggest definitely reaching out to your centers um, and seeing if something like this could be possible. And I, I like that idea. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I know, um, <laughs> but that's kind of it. You know, that's what we were talking about. Is this is another way to have people you know, like the snack where they get to see other kids taking enzy enzymes and you know other people that 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 sense of I'm not alone. It's not just me mm -hmm. or something else like that. Um, I, that really resonates. I like that. Yeah, Good. yeah. Good example. Um, well, Rob, I have a question for you. Um, how have you helped create a sense of community through gaming or through wellness activities? Uh, I would, I, I think really that one of the things that for, for us was, was important when, when Jennifer, my wife was unable to do a lot of activities, you know, uh, she was on oxygen full-time for a year before she ended up having a transplant and, you know, we couldn't go, couldn't go do the activities we used to with the kids. They're still fairly young and, um, our sense of, you know, just, I don't know how broad of a community is, but for us really in our family, it was, here's how we're going to do this. We would play, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the Wii game. So we're up and moving a little bit. Um, so it was just little games with our, our phones, you know, where that little game where you'd flip it on your head and do different things. And, you know, just, it's just stuff to be everybody involved where um, Jennifer still could, even though she was doing her, her vest, you know, her, her vest or uh, nebulizer or anything she was doing. So we could do that. And that's, one of the things I like about this idea of a, uh, a virtual or online gaming community is connecting other people who don't maybe have somebody to do those things with and can can still be a part of this community and find other others that are you know able to relate and, and get to there. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Um, right, it is. It's such a good way to help build those connections and that, that mm -hmm. can be really lacking. You know, I think that that's a huge aspect to feel not so alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I have a question for Kelsey next. Um, how do you find a connection within the different CF communities who all have different symptoms? Uh, that can be difficult. It. I know a lot of times, you know, people want to be, they're a little more reserved. They're not comfortable throwing that out there, but just talk to them like another individual, you know, just befriend them and, I found one of the easiest ways is just to do a subtle cough. You know, if you're clearing your throat for mucus, just cough back up, you know, darn CF. And it kind of is a easy segue into CF, you know, and you can start talking about how you're feeling or what's going on and just 
talk to them, see how they are. I mean, they may not want to reach out either. So put that branch out there for them. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, Kelsey, that you mentioned that because that was one of the things that I thought of as we were talking through this stuff is, you know, I, I don't have CF, so it's not me, but you know, my wife always had that cough. And thinking what that is, you know, if you're online with a group of people, strangers, friends, whatever, I would imagine you get somebody that always says, hey, why do you keep coughing? What's going on? Are you sick? And and that's where, uh, I don't know, maybe it's odd, but I picture, you know, a, a group of CFers online playing a game together, collaborating. And there's you know, little little coughs here and there going on, but nobody cares. Nobody right. says, and not that they don't care, but nobody says anything because it's, you all, you, you all understand it. And that's just the way it is. And let's keep going. I found one of my frustrations, you know, when I first started getting big into multiplayer gaming was it was handy having the mute for your mic while gaming with people. And yeah, it helped to mute it when you're coughing, but then you continue on and sometimes forget that you had it muted. And so you get into the heat of battle and are trying to communicate with your teammates yelling at them, you know, why aren't they doing this? And then you realize I... that whole time muted. Yeah. So <laughs> And, and then they're yelling at you, like, sorry, I tried to help, but right. I was talking to myself. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. On a, a side story, completely unrelated to gaming, just because it makes me laugh. It was like a game for me. Uh, my wife is very short. Um, I'm almost 6'3". She's a foot shorter than I am. So we'd go out shopping, and she'd, she'd wander off, or I would wander off most of the time, and I would lose her. You know, she couldn't see her over the tops of the, uh, the shelves in the store. So that cough is like Marco Polo. That's how I always <laughs> found her. Oh, there she is. Yep. Well, she got the transplant and I had to start calling her on her cell phone because I couldn't find her anymore. <laughs> you know, for us, it was one of those things we did that made a game out of, you know, something that was, was, you know, not meant to be, but you just, your story reminded me of that. So, okay. Right. Definitely. Uh, all right. So Kelsey, another, another question for you. Yeah. Uh, how have you connected with others through gaming platforms like Twitch stream discord, uh, is there a CF Discord channel available? And I was then... going to say, there is um, there is the CF Discord channel now for everybody to join in and be able to connect that way. I also have found several uh, just groups, not, you know, like Discord where you can actively chat and everything, but actual groups on like Xbox and PlayStation where mm -hmm. people can, you know, tag little messages and be like, oh, hey, you know, reaching out to the CFers, just saying hi and kind of have a club. I mean, it would actually be an easy way to put the discord in those groups to bring in more people. So. I, I do like that. Um, and I, I saw for some reason, I can't add my own stuff into the, uh, the comments for this, but I do see Kelsey, you put in there, uh, never expiring link for discord that's a new server that's just recently been set up kind of related to this conversation uh and i think some of the things I'm, i was hoping to see more in the chat so anybody that's listening or you know still on put in the chat you know what are some of the games you enjoy playing uh and then what are the different age groups because you know it's, that's the other thing is what what kelsey or i play is going to be different than a parent with younger children but um, when I was talking to my wife about this idea of, of gaming, she one of her first thoughts was parents with younger kids. If it's something that they can get games, recommendations for you know age-appropriate games or stuff to play, it might help them to be able to sit down and continue playing on, you know, do their treatments or their breathing treatments and, mm -hmm. you know, something as an incentive. So, yeah, we talked with a lot of our patients, too, is that. To, you know, vests, for example, and doing the nebulizers are so hard for those little kids to stay still for so long. So a lot mm -hmm. of them try to isolate a game that's really um, motivating or interesting. And it'd be really cool to be able to, you know, with other kids, if there's, you know, there is an interest out there like that, it'd be really neat, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can also add the Discord link to my Twitch. So when other CFers or mm -hmm. their family sure. come into my Twitch, they can have access to it that way as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. I, I really like that idea. Um, so we kind of plan to to not have too many scripted questions to lead the discussion. We're hoping for some some more questions from the audience. Um, but we're also going to ask you guys a question. What gamers or influencers or you know, links to different channels are there in the CF community that you guys follow? 
So we'll we'll kind of keep talking a little bit, but please put those in in the chat. Um, add in there any any games that you enjoy. Again, some of the age groups on those. If you if you're looking to connect, uh, again, Kelsey put the Discord invite in there, the invite link. Just put your your handles in there, whatever you want to put in there, because that's the idea is start to kind of build something and and be able to connect and do stuff. So. Um, Okay, so now that's the end of our questions. We're just going to make it up as we go here and keep talking. <laughs> um, what is, uh, what is the, what was the first gaming system that you guys you guys ever played on? So I have never done any gaming. Not not even like solitaire on your phone or something, Maureen. So you know, I don't really have any. I play, I play Wordle on my phone but I don't, <laughs> I don't have much. I'm very much a novice at this stuff, uh, with the formal gaming things. I mean, I did play some Nintendo, like, in college. So I played that. And Guitar Hero, but that's not really gaming, is it? Oh, absolutely, that's okay. gaming. all right, so I've done those. <laughs> absolutely, that's gaming. Guitar Hero, wow. So when I, when, I, when, I throw like, when I throw, like, Atari out there, the old Atari 2600, not the retro one that's come out in the last few years, like the original <laughs> one. I it's okay, Kelsey. You can laugh. Talking about the yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably talking about because they saw it in a museum somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, that still was... covered in dust. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah, that was it. The Atari. Kelsey, how about you? Uh, mine was the NES back when I was three years old, I believe. So I didn't get into the computer stuff until a little bit older. And then I started playing Frogger on the single oh. color monitor. So nice. with the five and a quarter floppy disks or five and a half. Oh, you mean the, the save icon that, that kids today don't yeah. understand why yeah. that's the save icon. Got it. Exactly. And uh, and Alex in the chat, I can see what's what's going on over there. And Final Fantasy VII, one of the greatest games ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so that was pretty good. Have you How played about, the remake? Not yet. I have it. I have it. I'm afraid to play it actually because you know they, is is it going to still is it a still hold up? Exactly. It's actually not too bad. Okay. I've played through the first uh, chapter, I guess you can call it, and it's actually not too bad. It's a different uh, fighting system, but I feel like it was well done. So, okay, good. There's a um, natural gas processing plant about an hour north of of here and where I live and I have to drive by it to go to the airport. And it looks and, and if you go by it in the dark, it's all lit up. It looks like for, for the rest of you nerds who are out there maybe watching this in Final Seven Final Fantasy Seven Midgar, you drive by and that's exactly what it looks like. So nice. Th there's three of us on here that are gonna enjoy it. That comment. <laughs> that's that's all right. Um okay how about analog gaming? And by that I mean like old school playing cards, uh solitaire or um tabletop tabletop games you know what what was what's your favorite tabletop game oh that's a tough one mm -hmm. i've got a few oh, you go ahead as far as like <laughs> card games i would say munchkin never heard of it you guys haven't one. heard of it nope. you yeah. have like characters and items and you try to level up your characters to fight the bosses and you okay. can fight it solo or you can like bargain with other players to help you fight. Be like, hey, I'll give you this item, you know, and you can have this much XP if you help me fight this boss, like if you're too low level and stuff. And it's actually a lot of fun. Interesting. So that sounds fun. Interesting. We do a lot of pitch that card game. I like that one. Or trivia pursuit, although I'm not the strongest trivia <laughs> pursuit player, but it's fun. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, so like um categories. Oh, love that one. I love that game. That's Absolutely love that game. I that's I actually was trying to think of that and I couldn't think of the name of it. But yes, categories. Yep. <laughs> yep. So it, that I love that game. Um, but my daughter taught me a fun game uh, with just playing card called cards called garbage that I don't think I can explain very well on here. <laughs> Uh, but you know, talking about games, and, and since now it's it's clear that what a what a big nerd I am, and I happily embrace that. 
it's me and some friends. So us, so us early 40 year olds decided now at this point, we're going to try and learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. And there's like a cool online thing. My one friend got into real big, but that is also something I think is, is pretty neat that anybody could do, you know, um, start getting into it. He's learning. My, my nephew is teaching us old people how to do this properly. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, I do want to talk something, something from the chat came up that I do want to make sure we talk about a little bit more. And I'm going to rely on you, Kelsey, to help explain this best. Uh, what is discord? How do we describe discord? And, and for anybody that maybe hasn't seen that or isn't familiar with that, well, how would you describe that? Uh, Discord would be a, in simplest form, real-time forum, mm -hmm. or for us old people, the email list serves. I, you know, I, I would say that's pretty good. Even, even it's almost something like this where you can log in and there's different sessions, right, for the channels. Um, where you could log in. There's there's voice channels too. You log in. We can just chat like this. So my my nephew's been in Kuwait for a year, and we go on Discord and we can voice chat like or video chat just like this. I can watch a a show on my computer here and stream it to the screen, and so he can sit in Kuwait uh, Kuwait and and watch the show with me while we we chit chat and talk back and forth while we're doing it. So it doesn't have to just be gaming or or other things. Just being uh, just, able to communicate and come mm -hmm. together, and it's there's no cost for it. You can you can pop in when you want to, jump out when you would want to. Um, what's it? I'm trying to think. I want to make sure everybody else knows what that is. Um, yeah, it's almost it's not it's not social media, but it's you're right. It's a great forum. You can jump into the different pieces you like. You, you don't have to go into one area where everybody's in there. It's you pick right. the one the areas you want to go into and go from there. I was okay. going to ask you back to the D and D. Have you heard of the Roll Twenty <laughs> website? I, I just he did all the work. I just show up and tell stories. If you look up Roll Twenty, it has a lot of guides, and it basically has D and D all on one site. It allows you guys to play together online. You know real time and wait is that can, the, is that where it's got the graphics and stuff like your little players are moving um that i'm not sure maybe okay he, I, that might be what he's doing i don't know he just sends a link and says here you go this time log in that's what we do so okay that's that's great I'm, i was trying to think what was there was one other thing i was going to ask maureen mm -hmm. what is what is the uh what is the board game that you've played that you absolutely can't stand. And you can't say Monopoly because that's too easy. Oh, gosh. Um, There's like four people out there that like Monopoly and they force everybody else to play it. Yeah, I don't love Monopoly. Um, but let me think of a different one. Um, I, don't, I, I do love board games. I really do. There is not many that I don't love. I would say it's an easy out, but um, Monopoly is probably the one I is my least favorite. But... Trouble, trouble is fun. Not, trouble's maybe not my favorite, but it's a fun one. My All right, Kelsey. There's days. I've, there's a some battle one. Not, I like battleship, but there's a different one. I can't think of the name of it. That my brother and dad would set up for like days on the end of the board. Oh. Risk. Yes, risk. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that one. one that, that's what I. Yeah, that that's mine. <laughs> Yeah, probably more. <laughs> All right, like, Kelsey, your like, turn. What? Yeah, no, I <laughs> no, would say no risk, risk. Definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> the one you hate the most. I was gonna. Oh well, <laughs> I like the strategy behind it. I just hate the fact it takes so long, and I think that's a big reason why I like, you know, gaming on the computer. Is so many of these have now been turned into digital format and <clears throat> you know especially like risk or monopoly that takes a lot of time to set up and so to be able especially you know if you're doing breathing treatments or your vest like you don't want to be sitting there shaking while you're trying to set up stuff like that i mean i tried playing dark souls once while doing my vest and there was this narrow ledge that i had to go across 
and I got like halfway across and the combination of the vest shaking me and the albuterol making me jittery, <laughs> my thumb twitched just a little bit and I watched all those souls go down the <laughs> down the yeah. side and lost forever. And it was so frustrating. I just it just started trying to play that with my nephew uh, in the last <laughs> month. In case anybody out there that's that is not familiar with the the game Dark Souls, and I'm pretty sure the guy that created it or the the person that created it did it just to see if they could create a game that you can't win and is going to make you absolutely angry at mm -hmm. everything in the world, just to see if it would sell. And it did. There's three of them now, yep. and it is unbelievably hard and absolutely ridiculous. And I hate it. I actually created that category on the Discord server for not just of Dark Souls, but Soulsborne, because there's two different series. There's the Dark Souls, and then there's Bloodborne, and they are all the same genre that go together and make you want to rage quit, but they oh, are yeah. a lot of fun. It's it is terrible. Uh, in just a minute, I'm going to go through the Discord uh, game things that, that Kelsey has created, but... I want to call out in the chat, Anthony McDonald. There, excuse me, Anthony McDaniel said there's a math version of Word with Friends. Oh. Why? Interesting. If, I'm going to change my least favorite game. It's something based on math. <laughs> if, if it's a game where it has to be math nonstop, <clears throat> that is my new least favorite game, and I've never even played it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always had one little brag. I was a bejeweled master. <laughs> back in the day they you know there's bejeweled one two three mm -hmm. they had bejeweled blitz all that stuff and they had created bejeweled blitz on the xbox and oh. i was the first person to reach the 120 million score oh my on the leader wow like the second place person had like 80 8 million or something and i was the only person on there that had hit that yet so that's that nice. is impressive. Yeah, that is. That's it, my wife's uh, <laughs> same thing. Her her claim to fame is she is a Tetris master, a mm -hmm. a game that doesn't have any. <laughs> it, that's that's, <clears throat> that's her glory right there. Uh, it is fun with my nieces and nephews sometimes though. She would Jennifer would would play games like scary zombie type games, and they're all they would do is they'd sit back like she's like all right well, let's go attack this area and she'd try to run forward and they'd stop running just so she'd go in by herself and then scream <laughs> over the over the oh, through the internet and just scream in their ears at how terrified she was because everything came out and attacked her <laughs> um, it's like a reverse leroy jenkins <laughs> <laughs> all right I, i'm seeing uh, thank you everyone who's, who's who's sticking with us here and listening uh we're, i'm seeing some usernames in the chat um this again is where Kelsey, we're going to rely on you. It, so, like Alex Gant, she's got her username in there. Just no, that's not words with friends. Um, Anthony McDaniel's got his PS4. How do we actually connect with these people? <laughs> I was <laughs> going to say, I, I mean, have a computer, a, a Wii, and a PS2. I was going to say, I am creating a channel specifically listed as username so everybody oh. can put the platform that they're using the username and Excellent. just have it all of it and then that way we can be able to all connect together <laughs> any anybody that goes to the newly created um, cystic fibrosis gaming community uh, in discord i did about three percent of the work because i went out there and thought of the name and then i created it <laughs> and then i recruited kelsey <laughs> and that's where the other 97% of all content and everything has come from. Just I gotta to, say, I love the, the image. Oh, that's I'm gonna get that for a tattoo for my wife. That is I love that image. Yep. That is really cool. For anyone that can't see it, it's a Superman it? sign. It's it's a Superman symbol with uh roses around it. So I'm gonna do a Superman symbol on my arm and in, in big with purple roses around it and like a stem kind of weave through it. That's awesome. Uh, my daughter actually has has taken the idea and has drawn it out for me. Um, I got a really well done. Although uh, you might be demoted, Kelsey, just for adding the Fortnite channel in there or the <laughs> topic. I don't know. In my defense, yes, the game is horrible. 
with the building <laughs> stuff. I cannot do that. I don't have the <laughs> hand-eye coordination. I don't have the, you know, I feel like those are the people with the Zach Galifianakis meme where you see all of the trigonometry oh, and right. math yeah. floating towards right. the screen. Yeah, I can't do that. But they introduced a no-build uh, mm. version of it. So, you know, you have to use the environment to hide. Like, you you don't have the yeah, build a steel walls and skyscrapers. Yeah, and it is actually a lot of fun. I actually started playing, like, three weeks ago now. So, it's it's a little bit addicting. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> see, Alex. See, Alex here. He plays Fortnite too. Oh no, Roblox. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, Alex. Okay. I was trying to see somebody. Somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel. <laughs> hey, hey, now. Face, face palm for the Fortnite. That's what we got. <laughs> okay, somebody from the audience, give us one more question. Otherwise, we're gonna maybe end a little bit early. What? What else? What is? What is your burning question? Somebody really wants to know about. Oh yeah, Pokemon. Oh, see, Alex, he, Pokemon <laughs> is right after Fortnite in his list. Um, <laughs> oh, um, Ariel, don't forget, sorry, guys, the new one comes out in a little under a month. Oh. <sighs> Hey, uh, Maureen, how do we mute him? How do we, can we, can we selectively just mute when he's able to speak on this thing? <laughs> um, Ariel, uh, copy the link that, uh, uh, Kelsey put in the chat earlier so you can, you can get into the discord that's, that's started up. I don't know if we're going to have access to these chat notes afterwards or the comments afterwards. So I'm, I'm watching all the names go by and not able to, um, copy, copy them or, or catch them at all. Uh, I have a question, Alex Gant. If you can, if you can throw something in the chat real quick, uh, when you're when you're online gaming with the, you know family or friends, whatever else, how often are you are you cursed out as a as a guy playing games versus the the lady that you actually are? <laughs> Excellent, Ariel. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> um, if we had prizes to give you for being the first, that would, that would probably be it. <laughs> okay, Anthony McDaniel. Copy that link from the from earlier in the comments and get on the Discord. Actually, it's probably just get on Discord. But I have this. I, I so I tried to make my kids, you know, little little detour away from the gaming stuff. Retur refer to any social media that they ever talk to about as the the <laughs> Facebook, the Snapchat, the TikTok. Just just because it amuses me and. They refuse. They just call me old and say they're not going to do it. So it's just become a bad habit. I somehow talk myself into doing it. Uh, so so now I do it like that. All right. Any any further questions? Uh oh, Alex was able to type that her froze her screen was frozen before she could ask a question, but couldn't ask a question somehow. Interesting. It's a mystery. I do have to say, <clears throat> having the username Kelsey Gamer. Oh. Obviously, it's a spoof. <laughs> Obviously, it's a spoof, right? But so many people, even my age and younger, automatically assume it's female. Mm -hmm. So I will keep myself muted, and I get what I want in game. Oh no! <laughs> like League of Legends, there. You know, if I wanted to play a specific role. And they tried to force me into another one. I could be like, oh, I don't know how to play this. And they're like, oh, yeah, she doesn't know how to play. Give her what she wants. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <sighs> and, and here's all I can picture at this. At the end of the game, people are like, all right, all right, guys, we're, we're going to sound off. We're done now. Uh, Kelsey, thanks for joining us. I would artificially like, <clears throat> thanks, guys. It's pretty, been a pleasure. Oh, I'll turn it on. You know, sometimes they'll be like, "Oh, hey, you know, what, what's your Discord? You want you want to chat? Hey, let's be friends." Oh, and so man. I'll join with them and be like, "Hey, what's going on? Uh, you're a dude, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm catfishing you." <laughs> uh, but thanks for all the gear. That's fantastic. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's pretty good. So, Alex, you know, the question was, I was just saying, you know, how often are you playing online with your 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 family, friends, whatever, and 
you're you're mistaken. You're just ge- generically called a, a boy, and that's that's what Kelsey was sharing. He gets the same thing, and we lost Maureen. I guess that's our sign. Uh, any other questions? There she is. There Sorry. she is. Like questions from the group. <clears throat> this is this has been uh, a lot of fun. I had a great time just chat with you fun. guys. Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure if this is where it was supposed to go, but this is this is what we get. So that's how it's going to be. Um, how about? Excuse me. How about mobile games? What's your what's your your guilty pleasure mobile game? Where you're like, yeah, I play it. I, I try not to advertise it. I really don't have any games on my phone. I really don't. I don't know why. Well, Maureen, you have to stop being out there living life so much and just shelter yourself <laughs> a little bit was. more. <laughs> <laughs> shelter <laughs> yourself a little more. Games and stuff on my phone. I think I'm looking at my phone now to see what games I have on there. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously, mine was Bejeweled. I was gonna say we already we already know yours. So, <laughs> Simpsons tapped out. Alex, is that a mobile game? I'll have to check that out. So, I, it sounds all cool and stuff, but I'm like, you know, I the two I play the most are solitaire and cribbage. See those? I could get into those ones. That's all right. Yeah, that's yeah. they're 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 not. I'm not I'm not fancy. Any else? Sol- solitaire and cribbage are the two most played games on my phone. <laughs> kind of boring, but no, well, I'm more boring so. You gotta be careful. Once we get a little bit older, you're gonna start playing bridge. Oh, <laughs> ouch, ouch! We can start I mean, having like weekly meetups playing bridge <laughs> online. The bridge club. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's. I, I don't remember where I saw. It. There's that meme where somebody throws down a bunch of cards like a poker hand and says bridge. Ha ha. I, I don't know if that's how the game works. I've never played. That, that's about how it goes. So, outside of. Yeah, okay, don't so tell anybody you play Pokemon Go. That, that's <laughs> I, I did when it first came out. I went out with my daughter. We played it to try to walk around, and then uh, I, I don't know, like a few years after it was kind of kind of real big and stuff. I I was walking around. There was an old Pokemon laying on the ground, so I took a picture of it. I texted to a bunch of people and was like, "Hey, is this Pokemon Go? Did I win? I, I found one." <laughs> they didn't think it was so funny. <laughs> I sure. To did. be I fair, did. when it first came out, there was nothing to do on it. All you did was copy Pokemon, and that was it. Uh, And now there's so much content added to it. And when I was still up in Boston on the community days each month, you could walk along, you know, the main street of any of your towns, and there would be easily 100 plus people walking around. And everybody, you know, would share their friend codes, and everybody would meet up and do raids. And <clears throat> like doing one raid in person, it can hold 20 people per lobby. And even in my town, there would be two lobbies of 20 people each, like 40 people all walking together, <laughs> just walking doing down. raids. And wow. the problem was it was so addicting that once COVID hit and everybody was like, oh, well, this seems kind of dangerous, you know? And I was like, yeah, I'm just, uh, they were able to introduce remote raids so if you could see the gym you know on your map you could do it remotely and i drove by a few places when they're doing raids and there would still at least be 20 or 30 people doing it in person during covid oh really yeah it just so, so it's, it's like a flash mob except they're all just walking together exactly <laughs> it's a flock of flamingos yeah uh, that's hilarious Okay. Uh, any any last questions from either of you guys or comments uh, to share? We're gonna we're gonna start to to wrap it up. Thank you guys in the in the the comment section who are who are still online with us, listening and shaking your head or whatever you may be doing at at, at the conversation. We we greatly appreciate it. But I'll Kelsey and Maureen, if you guys want to wrap it up or say anything. Yeah. No. This was great to do with you guys. Um, this has been a pleasure, and hopefully, we build a you know help build a little bit more of a community. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, guys, don't forget to put your platforms and usernames that you play on and the games you play also. And then there's also a suggestion channel for additional games that you guys play if you want other categories added to be able to chat about them. So definitely. 
Excellent. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can we can get some of these comments where it's got all the, the na- screen names and everything else in there that uh, we can reach out and connect with you. Um, but I guess we will we will close it up. This is this has been a lot of fun, uh, I will say, for, for me just to chat back and forth. And I, I like the uh, the random directions the conversation takes us. But thank you to our speakers for sharing your knowledge and insight about gaming. Uh, thanks to everyone again for all your questions and, and activity in the comment section. This actually concludes uh, FamilyCon, the CF Cystic Fibrosis Foundation FamilyCon 2022. There are many wonderful resources related to the topics heard throughout the past two days in the resources document, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, located in the reception page. Please spend some time exploring uh, the resources and download anything that you would like to keep. Any panel discussions you may have missed are now available under the video resource tab on the left side of your screen. You can come back to this site using the same link used to access the event and watch any panels you have, may have missed. Only the English version is currently available. In a few weeks, you'll receive an email notification when all the session recordings, including Spanish version, version excuse me, are available on the CF Foundation uh, YouTube site. My throat's a little dry. I realized on the camera that my Gatorade I was drinking is making my mouth all red, so I stop <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you all for attending cf family con uh, we hope you complete the post event survey which you receive via email immediately following the event uh, we greatly appreciate your feedback and thank you again for joining us and we're looking forward to see everybody again at cf family con 2023 Take thank care, you so everybody. much guys nice.